as we welcome you to Denver a beautiful day 45 degrees at kickoff time the Jaguars and coach Tom Coughlin he's been called a lot of things one of those is a strict disciplinarian and what's become wrong with the discipline absolutely nothing there are no hidden agendas with coach Coughlin and I'll tell you one thing about it. everybody understands their role they're all under one umbrella there are no exceptions Tom Coughlin has a theme for every week this wing week is this with success brings greater challenges and I'm going to tell you something else they all understand where he's at yeah, it's a two touchdown underdog the challenge today the great John Elway of the Denver Broncos his uh, greatness pass book has been stamped on every page but Super Bowl. That's right Dick and in my opinion John Elway physically is the most dynamic quarterback ever to play in the National Football League. He is durable. He's tough. He has great arm strength and we talked to him yesterday. He says you know what I'm playing quarterback now better than ever before. He was very excited because he knows this Denver team gives him a chance to go to the Super Bowl and win it. Well, talk is over. It's time to play. The winner goes to the AFC Championship. Only one time have the Broncos stumbled in the playoffs here at home, and they need a team, Jacksonville, that has not lost a game since mid-November, and Tom Coughlin's young team maturing rapidly in its second year, and there is the main reason Mark Brunel, he has stardom written all over his talent, and to think that he was on the same Green Bay team with Brett Favre and Ty Detmer, three men, all quarterbacking teams, and the playoffs this year. Here we go in Denver. And the spirit is indeed mile high. Kick comes down short to Ricky Bell. Caught the sun. It's Bucky Brooks, a former Buffalo Bill, across the 25 to the 27 yard line. The Jaguars send out Mark Brunel, who led the league both in rushing as a quarterback and had more passing yards and here's the main reason the offensive line developing into a good one and Tony Baselli a star he is imposing Coleman Wydell Tilski Searcy who was in the Super Bowl with the Steelers last year Natron means off his best ever game in Buffalo Maston is the blocker Smith and McCardell are the wide receivers both with more than 80 catches Derek Brown the ex giant at tight end Ronell was horse through the course of this week with loud noise played in the Jaguar practices for this reason. Listen to the din. Means. Lost a yard, flags fly, delay of game as Brunel trying to change plays and couldn't do it against the noise of this crowd. No play, delay for the offense. Five yards, still first down. Gives us a chance to introduce the Denver defenders. As uh, Jim pointed out, all uh, 11 of these men started the first game of the year. Williams, Lodish, Michael Dean, Perry, and Alfred Williams. Williams, a career year, goes to the Pro Bowl with Michael Dean. John Mobley, the rookie from Kutztown State. Aldridge Romanowski, the former 49er and Eagle. Crockett in Washington, lots of experience at the corners. Braxton had a super year, nine interceptions, tied for the league lead. Steve Atwater, a man to watch, 27. He'll be zeroing in on Natron Means. First and 15. Incomplete. And Ray Crockett almost got a hand on it. Reggie Barlow was the nearest Jaguar. Well, we know for the Jaguars on offense, Phil, Brunel's got to have a big game. He is really the factor in his football game. The other guy is Natron Means. If Natron Means gets 100 yards, then Jacksonville offensively have a chance. Well, Denver's defense, they know they got to start, stop Mark Brunel. And what they got to do today, the defensive ends, Alfred Williams and Dan Williams, go up the field, don't get inside. Keep Mark Brunell in the pocket because once he gets out, you're in trouble. Both McCardell and Smith are to the right. Give it to Means on the draw, and the big man barrels his way out to the 34-yard line before he's horse collared by Steve Atwater. A 12-yard gain by Means, who has always run well against the Broncos as a Charger had some big games. This was an excellent call. It's a nice trap. Well, it's a good call. It's a trap inside. It's second and 15. Spread Denver's defense out. Trap up inside. Natro means good job getting close. Now you can pick up a third down, third and short. Third down and three. Shotgun Brunel. 
Incomplete, deflected at the line of scrimmage. Dan Williams, it appeared, number 90, got a piece of it. Well, it's a good job of the Denver defense. They send five people with Mark Brunell and watch the lanes, how they keep all of it closed down. He thinks he might want to run, then he realizes there's nowhere to go. Make him stand in there and throw the football. And here's a ball that's just blocked right at the line of scrimmage, and there was no chance. Short kick, and Rod Smith says stay away from it. Takes a bounce out of bounds, and Denver will have good position at its 37-yard line. And here comes the 36-year-old Elway looking for his fourth trip to a Super Bowl. His offensive line reads this way. Zimmerman goes to his seventh Pro Bowl. Schlereth off two knee operations in mid-December starts. Nalen played for Coughlin at Boston College. Habib and Thompson the line. The backfield Terrell Davis uh, nosed out for the rushing title by Barry Sanders. Craver the blocker. Miller and McCaffrey the wide out. Shannon Sharp led all tight ends with 80 catches this year. Davis comes out way to the left bottom of your picture with Elway and a shotgun on first down. Well, this is that concern of Coughlin the play calling off the top of the game intended for sharp and broken up by Tom McManus defense for the Jaguars McManus in the middle a man out of work two years ago Jeff Lagerman Don Davey Yurkovich and Simmons Simmons with that big interception in Buffalo for a touchdown Kevin Hardy the touted rookie from Illinois McManus and Robinson the backers Aaron Beasley a rookie from West Virginia starts with Mickey Washington Dana Hall and Chris Hudson at safety second and ten for Elway again in the shotgun Wide down Elway throws complete to Anthony Miller who was drilled by Chris Hudson let's see if it counts could be holding in the backfield against Denver it is holding in the backfield Red Cashin is our referee is 25th year in the National Football League this will be his last game one of the most popular men around in a striped jersey holding number 75 on the offense 10 yards still second down. Brian Habib, number 75, the right guard. He's going to try to block Jeff Lagerman coming around. Jeff Lagerman, number 56, has speed. He takes it inside, and as Tom Coughlin said yesterday, he doesn't have great stats, but this guy is playing great defense for us right now. Lagerman, who came to Jacksonville as an unrestricted free agent a year ago from the Jets. So Elway stares at second and 20. Scrambles. His hamstring is better. Oh, is it ever? Dives across the 45. He's near a first down. You know what the thing about this play is when Elway dives, though, Phil, they give him that little bit of extra yardage because he didn't slide. He dives. If he slides, it's where the ball hits when he goes down on the ground. Here's Elway. They're playing man coverage downfield. He sees the opening, and he takes off. You're absolutely right, Dick. His hamstring is fine. But here at the end, they'll give him this little extra because he dives forward, and he isn't touched until there. One of the all-time rushers at quarterback, John Elway, over 3,000 yards, and many Phil Brunel. If he stays healthy, he'll be on that elite group. It's third and less than a yard. Terrell Davis gets his first chance and has just enough for the first down to the 48-yard line. But the scramble by Elway, the key, and so remindful of the talent of Elway in his younger years when he played on lesser teams. Well, Dick, the thing they're doing, the Broncos spreading the defense, their offense out, Jacksonville they're making them declare they can see right away Elway can is it man or zone the last time he knew it was man coverage by the formation when he runs there's nobody looking at him Yeah, well, they're going to go through the formality of a measurement it appeared that he Terrell Davis made it by plenty wasn't it interesting last night Tom Coughlin the coach of the Jaguars saying to us that well, we don't expect Elway to run he doesn't want to run anymore uh, and we're sitting there because we knew that his, that his hamstring Elway's was is perfectly fine. He said if I have to run I'll run. But Tom Cobb said I don't think he will. Well I think what he was really trying to say too though John Elway will move around and look to throw it first if he can because that's that's what he does Paul. He loves to move around by that extra second and then throw it down the field. And the Broncos showing how successful they've been on opening drives. That's part of that scheme of scripting the plays. Mike Shanahan borrowed from San Francisco. Complete to Dwayne Carswell, the tight end, toppled by Aaron Beasley after an eight-yard gain. 
Well, Dick, we talked about it earlier, the scripted plays. They have 15 of them. And, Paul, you asked him, do you save anything for later in the game? And he says, no. I give them all my good stuff early, and this is one of them. The play action fake one way, rolling out. The Broncos love this play. It's called a naked bootleg. Jacksonville says, we got to stop it. First time out, they let it get by, though. Carswell, the man who caught that one, is from Jacksonville. That's where he grew up, so he is uh, pleased to get an early call. Second and two, Terrell Davis. And good job defensively against the run by Jacksonville. Jim? Well, Dick, I spoke to Shannon Sharp before he was introduced. He said head coach Mike Shanahan had a brief message. He said, don't play cautious. Don't play as though you are going to lose the game. If you make a mistake and you're playing hard, that's okay. We'll play through the mistake. But let's play today with total reckless abandon. Dick? Mike Shanahan in his second year. This, uh, interestingly, he has one less playoff game as head coach than Tom Coughlin. This is his first, and Coughlin, of course, last week with a win at Buffalo. Third and two. They lost about a half yard on that last carry. Elway. Incomplete. Shannon Sharp, the throw was a little low, and Sharp appeared to kick it out of his own grasp with a knee. Well, they got the matchup they wanted. They, they got Shannon Sharp out on a safety, Travis Davis, one on one, and he just drops the football. Sharp, who has. High expectations going into these playoffs as the Pro Bowl tight end AFC Tom ruined a punt. It was net over 36 and Chris Hudson who played up uh, in Boulder at the University of Colorado back at the 10 for Jacksonville. Hi. Hudson staring. Beautiful bounce for Denver. And will be down at about the 10 yard line. There's been a change already on the offensive line for the Jaguars because number 79, their center, Dave Wydell, has a strained left calf. He came out of the game, so his backup, number 63, Michael Cheever, is in the game. Back to you, Dick. All right, Beasley, first down for Brunel, and the Jaguars at their own 10 give it to Means. And Matron for a yard, and that's all, as John Mobley led the def defensive charge. Matron. Means uh, from Concord, North Carolina, was a second round pick of the Chargers. Fake. Brunel on the roll. Alfred Williams can't get him, throws incomplete, throws it away. So Williams with a chance for a sack, couldn't quite bring Brunel down. Well, Alfred Williams, number 91, we got a chance to talk to him. And his job today, make sure you keep Mark Brunel in that pocket. He does a good job. He sees him coming out. He gets outside, makes him pull up. That's important. Now he can't make the play down the field. It's not important for him today to get the sacks. Make Mark Brunell beat you from inside. It wasn't it? Wasn't something? Because at the beginning of the week when they told me you're going to be a contained man, he said I was really disappointed. Then a couple of days later, I realized this is a team sport. I have to do what the defense calls for. Brunell looking for his first completion, 0 for 3. Screens it to Means. Falls at the 14. And the Jacksonville Jaguars will have to punt. That time you got Alfred Williams in coverage. Fell, they played that, uh, that zone blitzing deal where Williams drops off, and he was the guy that makes the tackle when Means goes down on the screen. On the punt, Brian Barker had a good season, averaging nearly 44, but his first punt wasn't much. Only 29, and he lines this one. Returnable. Smith handles the hop at the 45 and steps out at the Denver 49. A 41 yard kick. Five on the return. Fidgeting, biting his nails like any father. John Elway's dad, Jack Elway, a longtime coach, Washington State, Stanford, Cal State, Northridge, still involved with the Broncos. Said he knew he had something special in Elway's junior year in high school. He said, Oh, is he going to be good? Jack himself, a terrific quarterback in his Washington high school days. Elway fires complete to Terrell Davis. It'll be short yardage into the Jacksonville 49. Kevin Hardy, the rookie backer from Illinois, made the stop. Dick, we were watching him biting his nails. He's got those nails up to the first knuckle. <laughs> there will be no nail. I mean, he is just nervous. Oh, yeah, you can't enjoy the game as a father right there. He's just playing every play. And, of course, being an ex-coach just makes it worse, too, because he might understand too much of what's going on. So pretty good genes in that Elway family. His Jack Elway, his father, his granddad, John Elways, was a player back in Altoona, played against Jim Thorpe. 
Toss to Terrell Davis. And he makes his first statement. Davis is clear to the 10. Out of bounds. Inside the 5. Oh, and he gets some great blocking downfield. I mean, he set this whole thing up for the receivers to be able to block downfield. But really what makes the play go, what's the offensive lineman of Denver? They get the blocks, they stay with them. The defensive lineman cannot get off. That enables Terrell Davis to get out in the open field, and that's what the, the Jacksonville people told us. As a group, Denver's offensive line is the best in the National Football League. Here comes Anthony Miller. Watch Anthony. He just stays with his man, and Terrell just breaks it right off behind him. What a beautiful block by a receiver. Davis now gets the ball. First and goal, and he has not quite knocked it in as the signal is at the one foot line. As a very interested spectator watches Terrell Davis get up off the pile. Katery Davis, his mother up here from San Diego, California. He was a star at Lincoln High School there, same school that produced Marcus Allen. 47 yard run by Davis, got him inside the five, and now second and goal. Usually a quarterback sneak out of this formation. Elway puts a ball, lurches for it, and didn't quite get the call. Not quite in, says the headlinesman. It'll be third and goal. Well, it looks like from up here that John Elway got the football over the goal line. Let's take a look at it. He knows he stopped. When he sticks the ball out, oh, it's yeah. definitely across the line. Unless they ruled that his progress had been stopped before he leaned forward. But I'll tell you what a great job was Lagerman. Lagerman came down and just nailed Elway, and, and, and that's where they might have called he stopped forward progress, but the ball was over the goal line. Craver and Davis now lined up behind Elway. Terrell Davis stacked up. He does not get in. From the backside, Tony Brackens helped out a terrific surge by that defensive right side of the line, again led by Lagerman. Well, it's a good job of the Jacksonville defensive line inside. Don Davies and John Yurkovich get back into it. They beat the offensive line to the punch. Oh, that could have been a very costly yeah. play as Terrell Davis slow getting up. Davis, uh, you'll recall, if you were with us early in the year in the San Diego game, suffering migraine headaches and uh, then recovered and has uh, given that to the rest of the league defensively with over 15 hard hundred yards rushing. Well the linebackers feel beautifully on this play and Terrell Davis is trying to get up over the top and then the linebacker fill and then in the defensive line coming down but the linebackers are the ones that filled to stop the forward progress. Well it looks like he got bent back over his leg and that caused some pain I do not know what he hurt. So Brackens from the backside with all the pressure forward as Davis uh, five carries thus far appears to be okay. But before he went down, Dick, before they knew he was hurt, they, they just said, there's his mother, Katerie. But before he went down, they just said it in, we're going to go on fourth down. And they haven't changed their mind. Well, fourth and goal. It started at the three. Davis got two yards and then two shots from the one have failed for Denver. And now fourth and goal they line up with Vaughn Hebron as the tailback behind Craver. Terrell Davis, but Hebron, the former Virginia Tech star, slams it in, and Denver has the first score. You know, you always say you put points on the board when you can, but Mike Shanahan is a little bit different. <laughs> he just said, hey, I'm at home. I'm going for it. Jason Elam for the extra point, and no good. The first miss this year by the Denver Broncos. Well, that thing never even cleared the line of scrimmage. Watch Gary Zimmerman, the left tackle, number 65, create the hole for the Denver touchdown. Does a good job pushing it down inside, enables the back to go outside and score an easy touchdown. And John Elway's wife, Janet, 
anxiously watching. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't so happy when she watched uh, oh. <laughs> the ensuing play. The extra point blocked by veteran Clyde Simmons as Hepburn enjoys a first playoff score and Simmons blocks his third kick of the year and his 11th of his uh, long and illustrious career. Six nothing and we'll see how important that is as the game unfolds. Bucky Brooks running into his own man and tackled inside the 15. Rod Smith made the play. Jim? Well, Dick Terrell Davis twisted his right knee attempting to go over the goal line. The Broncos training staff is looking at him right now. They say it's just a twist and he should be able to return the next series. Dick? Good news for Bronco fans. As Jacksonville down 6 0, and uh, predictably, Denver tough in this opening quarter, best in the league at producing points in the first period. Grinnell scrambling and brought down by Dan Williams. Williams with a sack, a loss of about a yard at the 12. Mike Lodi sets it up. He's a defensive tackle, 97, forces Brunel to step up, and when he does that, then Dan Williams makes the play. Mike Lodish, number 97. Watch Dan Williams, number 90, stays outside. You're not coming out here. When then Brunel scrambles, he falls off of his block and gets the sack. You see where Alfred Williams was again, Phil, way to the outside. He's got contained. Brunel sacked more than any NFL quarterback this season. Means to the 15, and that's all. You can't run that play with means and, and wait and make that big a delay. Not as quick as this deep Denver defense is, Phil. If you're going to run Natron Means up the middle, you're going to have to run him on a direct hit right now. Defensive coordinator Greg Robinson calling the shots. It's now third down and nine. Well, it's, it's hard to run the ball sometimes against this Denver defense because they put so many people up the line of scrimmage. You cannot block them all, and they have the speed. That's why they make the easy tackles. Officially third and eight. Grinnell. Complete to McCardell. Keenan McCardell to the 21. Not enough for the first down. Wrestled down by Torrey James, one of the two young cornerbacks here in Denver. The Shanahan's very high on James and Darius Johnson. So Tom Coughlin watches his team sputter again. Trailing 6 0, and on comes punter Brian Barker. Well, we talk about Denver's fast starts. Their offense is great. The talent on that side of the ball is great. But this defense really sets it up, too. They continuously keep giving the ball back to the explosive offense. Rod Smith, over the shoulder catch, leaves one man at the 30. And then uh, is stormed at the 36 yard line. Bright skies here in Denver on this Saturday. First down at the Bronco 36. Vaughn Hebron behind Elway gets the pitch and the speedy little tail back out to the 40 yard line. One Run thing. Down. I'm sorry, Dave. Go ahead. Well, no, one thing Tom Coughlin told us yesterday, he says, if I have to commit my safeties to come up and stop the running game, he says, we're in a lot of trouble. And already after that last drive, I can see the safeties for, the, for Jacksonville up to the line of scrimmage trying to help out against the run. We saw Terrell Davis. Uh, Check into the Bronco huddle. Seven and seven. A bullet complete from Miller at the 44 yard line of the Jaguars. Mickey Washington covering 16 on the play. Yeah, let me, let me just tell you something. The Jaguars better do something. They have a full scale blitz coming, and this offensive line, watch them pick it up. Here they come, five guys on a blitz, and they don't even get close to Elway. And John Elway has so many weapons to throw to. One-on-one, -on -one, Anthony Miller with his great speed. It's hard to cover him across the middle. Shannon Sharp splits off on the right side. McCaffrey on the slot and Miller to the left. Shotgun. Elway steps up, goes underneath. Aaron Craver and Craver to the Jacksonville 37. Phil, when they've sent out five guys, they don't have enough people to cover. <laughs> Craver's sitting out there all by himself. Elway looks downfield. He has plenty of time. There's no one open, so I'll just dump it off to the fullback and pick up about seven. Yeah, you know, the worst thing you can do is get seven. That's a pretty good <laughs> choice for the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, again, 
the scripted plays the play calling is aggressive by the Broncos early in the game they want to they want to come at you get you reeling thinking about everything formations and and just different plays second and three and a toss to Davis Davis inside the 35 to the 33 has another first down Pritchett and Robinson the tacklers Dana Hall gets hurt on the play he's trying to reach around Zimmerman and make the play and I think he catches his arm on Terrell Davis. Zimmerman really doesn't get a good block on him because Dana Hall does the right thing he cuts back inside on the toss but he catches his arm. Dana Hall is number 28. Watch him on the outside here he is. Reaches back inside. I, I can't tell what what happened. No, right it, there. It, 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 the only thing you can see is his arm gets gets caught on Terrell Davis, and that'll pull it right out of the joint. One of uh, seven uh, Jaguars that started the season to play in a Super Bowl. Dana Hall, of course, with the 49ers on that '94 team. Oh, oh Zimmerman catches him with a with a, a right hook, <laughs> right in the head with his hand. He's up. Yeah, he's, I'm all right. I don't like the way you smack me in the mouth. <laughs> he was a teammate of Mark Brunel's and uh, Billy Joe Hobart at the University of Washington in their Rose Bowl glory years of the early 90s. And drafted uh, very high by the 49ers, was the number one pick. And with that play, the Broncos are first down situation again. That was their 15th play, and that's how many they script now, normally. Well, now he's out. Of, he doesn't know what to do now. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. It's up to Elway. That's yeah. not all bad. <laughs> Leading 6 nothing here in the first quarter. Two minutes remain. McCaffrey at the 19. Tackled by Beasley. 13 more for Denver. You don't really, really realize how great a catch this is by McCaffrey because he's looking directly into the sun. That's a good point, but Hardy, number 51, coming from the outside. So you got man coverage again by the Jacksonville defense, and he gets around Terrell Davis. But it shows you Jacksonville, they're going to come after Elway. They got to make things happen because if you sit back, they cannot stop Denver's offense. Now part of the script was to get everyone involved. Five completions, five different receivers for Elway. First down at the 19. It's nothing Denver, and it's Terrell Davis burrowing for a couple. Kelvin Pritchett, the former Detroit Lion, leading the way, number 94. You know, one of the good things was when the Broncos went down for Jacksonville was that they scored a touchdown. Yeah, and it took them four downs to get it in there. Then they missed the extra point. The only problem is when Jacksonville's had the ball three different times, they don't even have a first down or even close to a first down. Change at tight end for Denver is number 86 Byron Chamberlain comes in they feel he's going to be a very good player came on in the last couple of games Dana Hall has returned for Jacksonville second and nine. here I think I just call that way rocket man <laughs> I mean, that ball was a rocket the defensive secondary had no chance Phil well we always say Paul you can't stop a perfect throw that was a perfect throw now we mentioned that he's spreading it around that was his sixth completion his sixth different receiver and Shannon Sharp has the touchdown he had 10 during the regular season and now because of the blocked extra point on their first score they'll go for two from the shotgun with Craver and Davis bookending Elway and sending Craver in motion. Incomplete. Sharp was open handcuffed by the throw it appeared. So 12 nothing the score here in Denver. John is upset. I don't know whether it's with himself or with Sharp, but he's upset. Well, I think he's upset with himself. He threw it a little behind Shannon Sharp. But looking at the touchdown, Denver spreads the field. Watch Shannon Sharp. He comes in motion. They leave the middle of the field open. Denver thought they could take advantage of deep down the middle of the field. And look at Shannon Sharp. The speed, 
for a tight end people look at him they say tight end but they just don't realize how fast he can get down there and make things happen. Well they got a linebacker that tries to help out on him Hardy right there he's got him short and then then long never gets there so the safety doesn't get over to help out and it's touchdown but that's a perfect throw and you're right how do you defeat the perfect throw. So Elway takes his team 64 yards in seven plays. And Shannon Sharp 18 yards on the touchdown. Elway was four for four on the drive. There was an interesting graphic you had at the beginning of the show, Phil. That they're the number one team in the National Football League in the first quarter in scoring. Paul, we've heard it before. Everybody comes in here and plays the Broncos. They say the same thing. It's like the 49ers used to be years ago. We got to stop them early because they get off such a great start. And if we can, we can play with them. Well, it's a great theory. They just can't make it work. You can't stop them early in the football game. So Jacksonville is going to have to muster some offense. Uh, as Paul pointed out, three possessions, three and out, and they haven't uh, held the ball for more than a minute 57 on all three possessions. Bucky Brooks at the goal line. Brooks only to the 20, maybe the 21 yard line. Randy Hilliard in on the tackle as Brunel takes the field for the fourth time. Let's take a look at Shannon Sharp with a two point conversion. Does a good job. Fakes outside and look at that opening. The ball, it's really a good throw. Shannon Sharp, you're an all pro. You got to make those tough catches. And Elway, hey, he wants it all. He, was, he does. He was excited this week during practice, meeting with us, and you can tell all of it was worth it because he prepared well and he's got off to a good start today. Just 23 seconds left in this opening quarter. the middle linebacker it was intended for Keenan McCardell. Boy I tell you Ellen Aldridge you talk about reading a quarterback's eyes Dick and getting into the play. All, all he did was just sit there Red Brunel look at him you see 57 he's looking at the quarterback's eyes gets himself in a perfect position. We say it all the time but that's another good example Denver the change in the team speed last year they would not have gotten there to break that pass up you see it every game with this team. All three linebackers run the 40 and 4-6 or better. Three tight ends this time. A low to the right and then they get it to Means. But Means tripped up as he gets to the 25-yard line on the final play of this opening quarter. It'll be Jacksonville third down and about six when we go to the second. So this opening 15 minutes has been all on the side of the Denver Broncos. <laughs> We're back in Denver. A few Jaguar fans with cherry seat locations. Yeah. Yeah, look where these yeah. people are. They're up in the corner of the end zone directly into the sun. Well, they haven't even seen the first quarter yet. Hey, they're the enemy. <laughs> you know, the yeah. enemy. Why the enemy? Them good? Let them know. This is our place. We're going to give you the worst seats in the house. Yeah, I guess you're right. And hey, they're happy to be here. Jimmy Smith is the top third down receiver in the league this year. 25 first downs. He had a total of 83 catches from Jackson State. And they let Andre Risen go. He really, as uh, Tom Coughlin said, was tore it. Third and six. And it is to Smith. He steps out of bounds with a first down. How nice of you to set that up for him, Dickie. <laughs> well, the one thing Jimmy Smith has speed and size you can see him on the outside and look at the respects he gets good job of selling the route up the field makes Ray Crockett turn that makes it an easy throw for Mark Grinnell 11 yards and the first first down for the Jaguars trailing 12 nothing as we start this second quarter. Tommy Roy our producer John Gonzalez our director from Denver is Natron means he's a hole running through tackles to the Denver 46 yard line and that'll get the uh, beat pulsing a bit higher in Jacksonville. What a great block at the line of scrimmage by Brown and Baselli. The, the tackle in the tight end right here. Watch this on Alfred Williams. They just take him and kick him to the outside. Seal it off. Natron Means goes inside. That's a hole folks. 18 yard production for Means. Only 510 and 240 pounds. First time Jacksonville in Denver territory. Brunel, secondary receiver is the tight end Pete Mitchell, and Mitchell is to the 39. Alan Aldridge, the tackler, along 
with um, John Mobley. Good job by the Jacksonville offensive line. Watch Tony Baselli on the outside. Did such a wonderful job last week against Bruce Smith. Alfred Williams' role today is to get upfield to the outside. They get the means, and means fights his way to the 35 yard line, where it'll be another first down for the Jaguars. And Baselli, along with uh, all of his talents and Coughlin raving about his workout and the great feet he has along with those hands only allowed three sacks this year. Chad Brown got him for one but he shut out some pretty good players Brock O'Neill Johnson Pleasant Michael McCrary also uh, Chad Brown had a couple only three sacks allowed all year as James Stewart gives Natron Means a breather and on first down takes it to the 30 yard line. Baselli from Southern California is the second player picked a year ago and uh, the highest lineman pick since Tony Mandarich by Green Bay. 17 games played only three sacks allowed. How good is that Phil that's, Sims. Well that's that's better than good. That's real good. But the important thing is too why it's so good Dick. He's blocking for a running quarterback, which usually drives the sack stats up, you know, against these offensive linemen. Now, 47 other sacks went to teammates, but only three charged to Baselli. Throw and a good catch by Pete Mitchell, the tight end from Boston College, but he doesn't get anything out of it. Only a yard to the 29, well covered by Tyrone Braxton. There's and a guy. Let's just mention one more time. We did it a few weeks ago. Tyrone Braxton, I mean, there's just no reason why this man is not in the, in the Pro Bowl. It's a shame. He tied the National Football League with nine interceptions. And look what Tyrone Braxton here. Here's a catch of the tight end Mitchell, and watch what he gets after it. One yard. Tyrone Braxton. And at 185 to call him a strong safety is a misnomer. He laughs about it. Steve Atwater is 217. He's the three safety. On third and four. Brunel protected well. Guns it in. Complete to Mitchell. Right through his hands. And he may have been looking right into the sun. I, I think he was because Pete Mitchell, he does not drop many passes. And that's why he's in there for his ca pass catching ability. And when he turns. And he looks with his football. It is right into the sun, and Mark Brunell puts it right on the money. Yeah, he looked as if he was uh, fishing for that one. So Mike Hollis comes on. This will be a long field goal try for Jacksonville from the 36, a 46-yard attempt. You see, he had a 53-yarder earlier this year. Missed only six times. Young guy from Idaho gets a good boot into this one. It is good. Well into the screen and Jacksonville on the board earlier today Green Bay defeated San Francisco 35 14 did not have this problem up in Wisconsin looking into the sun rain throughout that one and that was the angle from which Mitchell tried to catch the ball from Brunel Vaughn Hebron at the six thirty into the thirty two goes Hebron Denver early here in the second quarter. Down Elway, perfect on the last Denver drive, except for the uh, two-point try. Underneath it goes to Carswell, the tight end, across the 40, fumbled the ball, and the scramble, and now uh, well, they say Denver was down by contact. McManus and Hardy reaching for the football. You have you have the, the defensive end with Clyde Simmons over the tight end, Phil. I mean, he's really in a catch-22. There's nothing he can do except let the tight end go, and it's supposed to be the linebacker that's picking it up. Now, the ball is loose, but he ends up... Nobody's going for the ball. They don't see it because it's underneath him. He gets it back. Oh. That uh, was uh, quick thinking by Carswell. Unfortunate the ball was uh, there within his reach. First down on the play. Just back into the backfield and a flag down as they fly from all directions. Two back in the backfield and one from deep downfield thrown by the back judge. Carswell, number 89, tight end holding. You know, we, we don't make the point often enough that when there is that holding call, it's often because the other player made such a good play you had to hold him to stop holding him. During the run. Well, you got Clyde number Simmons who's coming upfield. 10 yards, still first down. 
again you have Clyde Simmons coming up field Dick and he's 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 going to get to the to the runner and and what the, what the tight end is doing right here is just trying to save the runner watch this you see Clyde Simmons he controls the tight end Carswell now he's getting ready to throw him and he can't throw him because Carswell's got him by the waist well, the penalty takes it back to the 32 yard line and Elsway drops back Elway drops back into the shotgun It to Davis. Davis to the 35, and that's all. There's uh, three Jaguars led by Eddie Robinson there to bring him down. Phil, you know, when we're talking, we talked to Jacksonville about this offensive line of Denver. Now, they're older guys, and they're not going to like me saying that. They only have one guy in their 20s, in the 20s, that's a center. But they they mix so well together. I mean, they are they are just like what do they say? They're like a puzzle. And they just fit perfectly. Well, all that, five of them. Well, that's the key, and you got to give Alex Gibbs, the offensive hey, line coach. Track. He brings Watch them together. Track. He wants them to know it's important we do well as a group, and, and they do do that. Second and 17. Direct snap to Davis. He breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Now he has five, 10, 13, 14. Mickey Washington finally brought him down. They had Davis stop right at the line of scrimmage. Tony Brackets, I think number 90 was the guy that had him stop, and he doesn't hold on. Brackets is at the end of the line of scrimmage. And I think this is him. He comes inside, bam, and he hits him. But Terrell Davis just bounces back outside. What a great run. Brackens, number 90, nobody blocking him, does a good job, diagnosis the play, comes inside, but you see Terrell Davis' the strength and then the speed to get outside and make it a positive play. So instead of third and 17, it's third and two. Elway with that hard count, throws incomplete. Anthony Miller and Travis Davis, Davis able to knock it away. And the punting team on for Denver. Travis Davis, John Elway gets away with one that time. He is he is free. He's called the rover. He's up in the line of scrimmage. All he's going to do is just drop back in the middle and look for any crossing routes. Elway does not seem Travis Davis just a little bit late breaking on the football. Should have been an interception. On comes Tom Ruin with Chris Hudson perched at the 10. High spiral lands in the end zone. Touchback for the Jaguars, and now Mark Brunel, he and Billy Joe Holbert sharing uh, great years at the University of Washington. As a kid, he was a better pitcher, a left-handed pitcher, coached by his dad in Santa Maria, California. Starts at the 20. Play action. Alfred Williams can't get him. This is what makes him so tough. I lost Steve Young, but. He has to take the loss back at the 17 yard line. Well Alfred Williams told us yesterday I cannot let Mark Brunel get outside. He does a good job. But I tell you what again first time you see it he goes oh this guy's a little quicker and faster than I even anticipated and Mark Brunel but the good thing is everybody covered down the field didn't give up a big play. The one thing Alfred just learned on that play there if I'm going to be outside on Brunel what I have to do is once I get by Paselli I have got to get myself under control otherwise I'm not going to get a hand on this guy. That was a rule to sack it would go to Alvin Aldrich who was the closest man to the play. Second and 14 timeout Brunel. James jump together 79 comes into that defensive line for the Broncos five sacks this year and he's got that incredible forklift move he's so strong. Second 14 throwing the flat and Jackson Will Jackson tackled after a yard two yard gain by Ray Crockett. What a great job by Ray Crockett because what he does is he forgets all about goes right by the blocker on the outside not even concerned with him. My job is to get to the guy that's catching the ball and Ray Crockett makes a great play. Going to give him a good spot out to the 20 where it'll be third and 10. Here it is as Jackson whose brother Terry Jackson on the University of Florida national champions he scored a touchdown a couple nights ago. His dad Willie Jackson senior was the first ever black to play at the University of Florida. We're now under heavy trouble. It's intercepted. Tory James at the 25 the 20 and it's whistled dead. 
as a flag goes down and James may have been guilty of a foul in order to pick off that ball as Williams and Cadrez were pressuring Brunel. They're going to get call pass interference on the play. Remember one thing. Now you got Torrey James there. One, one thing when, when that ball is thrown both guys have a right to the ball. Now the question is you can't impede the offensive pass guys right. Number 20 on the defense. First down. <laughs> First down. All right, Red. Here it is. Watch this. Now, here, there's the bumping there. They're not calling it here. Here's what they're going to call it. Watch James. He goes through. He hits him with his arm and bounces him off the ball. You don't like the call. It's a terrible call. All right. I mean, you, you're penalizing the defensive back for being the aggressor and getting the foot, getting to the football before the wide receiver did. A break for the Jaguars. It would appear first down at the 25. Means only two on the play. Aldridge and Mobley there to make the stop. You know, just going back to the pass interference real quick, it would only be a penalty if he stopped the wide receiver for getting to the ball. He didn't impede the progress of the wide receiver. He just reacted better to the football when it was thrown. Second down. Like I said, and again, you, both guys have the right to get to it. Sorry, Dick. Means the lone running back. McCardell, and his dad says it's not McCardell, but McCardell to the left. Smith to the right, tight end Mitchell in motion. Here comes Romanowski, but he can't get Brunel. Now he chases after. Brunel going to run. And pushed out of bounds by Manu Tanuvasa. This young guy from Hawaii quietly had a very good year, number 98. He had five sacks. Grew up and played in Hawaii. First name means rock in Samoan. Is that perfect? Yeah, that's a good name for a defensive lineman, but Brunel again. Romanowski free shot on him just barely gets a hand on him but down the field there is nowhere to go with the football the Broncos doing an excellent job of covering the receivers once Brunel breaks the These guys got to understand something Phil. once they get back there near Brunel they've got to they've got to slow it down a little bit break their break their rush down closer to six than five for Brunel scrambles again now he throws means got away with a push off at the 41 yard line but no flag down as Romanowski was covering. Well, Bill, it Bill. didn't look like Romanowski looking back in the sun misjudged the ball and and means did not. I think he misjudged his jump. <laughs> Either that or he thought he was Michael Jordan. He was going to hang in the air for a couple minutes. But watch Bill Romanowski just gets caught off balance mistimes it. It was a nice touch pass by Mark Brunel. It hangs in the air and Natron doing a good job of going up. Hey he's got sunglasses on that shield <laughs> made it easier for him. Those are the only sunglasses allowed by the Jacksonville players. Yeah. One of Dolphins rules. 29 yards on the play. Brunel off play action chased. And finally caught from behind by Harold Hasselbach who played uh, with Brunel at the University of Washington. I'll tell you what I like about this team. They just don't give up Jacksonville. I mean they keep coming. They did it to Buffalo. We go here's Tony Baselli blocking here. He go, looks back to the outside. He's got Jeff Robinson number 94 on him and that's a takedown. You know Boselli, he's one of those linemen. He's not happy just blocking you. He wants to take you down embarrass you all those things and you know he's the perfect left tackle to have in the National Football League because he takes pride in protecting his quarterback. Second and seven is James Stewart in and he has it on the draw. Stewart who played at Tennessee doesn't get much tackled forward to the 35 yard line by Michael Dean Perry and John Mobley. Well you know the one thing take a look at the differences of the offensive line of the Jaguars against Denver's defensive front. Paul if I'm right I think it's 35 pound difference. Well that's why you don't try to run draws against these guys because if you give these guys a chance to run around you they're going to get there they're much quicker. So you've got to run directly at them. Three wide receivers right as Brunel operates from the shotgun and here comes Romanowski. He eludes him and guns complete. It is Willie Jackson for a first down inside the 20. You know I keep telling you you got to when you get to Brunel you've got to break down. You've got to slow it down. Romanowski comes up the middle not a soul near him and all Brunel does is step aside. Watch this here comes Romanowski straight up the middle. Watch what Brunel does. Boom. Back well, to the outside. Oh, I know you want to break down but 
I'm sure they're thinking of Paul, but this guy is quick, he's fast, and Romanowski coming straight at him. He can go either way. That's I understand. I'm just saying, you've got to break yourself down and get in his face and don't let him juke you. So the Jaguars trailing only 12-3, deep in Denver territory. Matron Means banging inside the 10-yard line, and you could hear the helmets crack on that one in the collision. Now, there's a point Tom Coughlin made, made to us yesterday. Talking about Denver's run defense, it ranks very high, but average yard per rush, it's not so good. It's 18th in the league because they're always ahead, so teams do not have the patience to stay with the running game. So Jacksonville, they should have some success inside. And one other thing he said was too, he said, we could beat this team if we don't turn it over. Second and three from the nine. Means again. Steps away from a tackle. Natron picking up from his 175 yard effort of a week ago gets eight more on that has 58 yards rushing in this opening half and Jacksonville is back in the game. Well just like a passing quarterback keep him in the pocket the defense has to do the same thing stay in your lanes be disciplined Denver was not that time they over pursued and Natron hey last week this week little patience breaks it outside there's nobody there. Thomas for the extra point. Barker, the punter holds, and Hollis connects. And Denver's lead reduced to two. Natron means Bobby Bethard of the Chargers uh, set him free earlier this year. Not a place for him in the Charger camp and uh, picked up by Jacksonville. And Tom Coughlin said a model student and performer. Down it comes to Hebron. And Vaughn Hebron of the Broncos to the far sidelines. He turns on the Jets, knocked out at the 41 yard line by Mike Hollis. That last drive for Jacksonville, 80 yards and 10 plays. Both their drives in 10 plays. And here was a critical call and play. Torrey James wedging his way for the ball, intercepts, not ruled an interception, ruled interference, kept the drive alive. A key, key play. Mike Shanahan apparently has been uh, jawing with the officials on the sideline since. 12-10 Denver as we approach the two-minute warning first half. This is where Elway's at his best. It, oh my, almost intercepted by Aaron Beasley. That was right in his mitts as he made the move in front of McCaffrey. Aaron Beasley set on the play the whole time. He sees John Elway. He read Ed McCaffrey's route and look at the break. He stumbles. Otherwise, he would have caught this in full stride. And John Elway, he was hey, ready to make the tackle. I know that move. Doing. I know that move. <laughs> Throw it and run and try to make the tackle. Beasley, the rookie from West Virginia, had just one interception in his first year in the bigs. Second and ten. Elway with a second breath. Now he does a little scramble. Clyde Simmons can't get it. Elway. First down at the 47 of Jacksonville. Eddie Robinson finally made the tackle, and Terrell Davis a nice job with a block. Boy, Terrell Davis really does make a nice block. He enables John Elway to pick up the first down. As Elway starts to scramble, he's looking. This thing breaks down right at the beginning. Clyde Simmons comes in. Watch Elway, and number 30 is Terrell Davis on the left of your screen. Here he comes in. He makes the block. McManus right there and enables John Elway to get the first down. That's three scrambles for Elway. 30 yards to keep drives alive. Now first down. Looking, looking, and throwing on. Too long for Anthony Miller. Mickey Washington on him, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. Yeah, I've been teeing it up to that big guy, and he likes, uh, like so many NFL players, to hit the fairways. Denver and L.A. trailing 12-10, second down at the Jacksonville 47. L.A. being chased by Tony Brackens, and Brackens gets him, and L.A. fortunate he didn't fumble. Down at the 46-yard line, a gain of a yard, so no sack, and this young man from Texas has been quite a fine. Well, when you look at Brackens, though, there's just no quit. Watch him. He's blocked at the line of scrimmage by Zimmerman there, and then he just keeps going after Elway. And look what he does. Now he goes for the ball. That's heads-up football. No sack, a gain of one for Elway, so it's third down and nine. You should look at Brackens in his rookie year. He's the youngest player on the field. He just turned 22. Tackles for loss, five 
forced fumbles and you can see why the way he went after Elway on that last charge. Timeout with 120 left and the timeout taken by Jacksonville. Brackens, uh, well, we have a moment, uh, most interesting young man. Uh, I like what he said yesterday. He says, my father is a rancher. They have an 800-acre ranch south of Dallas. He said, he made me work for every penny. He said, he taught me a wonderful lesson. Uh, well, you can see it the way he plays. He keeps hustling. He's a hard worker. And he also told us, he said, what's your greatest attribute as a player? And he just goes, speed. Elway, third down nine. Flags down. And it appeared that Brian Habib might have pulled back prematurely. And that uh, brings a little sigh to Shanahan. Before the snap, false start. Number 75 on the offense. Five yards, still third down. You know, we talked to Elway yesterday, and he made some, some statements in the paper, too, that, that you know, they thought this team may be too anxious. And may there's Habib, number 75, that's going to be moving before. That's what they call. But Elway said, you know, I may have to pull the reins in on these guys, Dick, and, and, and calm them down a little bit. I don't see that they're that hyped up. They just made some mistakes. Sure. Now Elway looking at third and 14. Texan breaks down, but Elway on the scramble throws underneath to Terrell Davis, tackled at the 45, eight yards shy of a first down as Kevin Hardy makes the play, and Jacksonville stops Denver here with uh, 105 left in the half, and then uh, Jaguars spend their last time out with uh, 105 left, hoping that they might be able to manufacture a drive at least for a field goal. Would that be something if? Uh, Halftime ended with Tom Coughlin's team in the lead. This is a well, this is a team that didn't win six in a row by accident. No, you know, no. Yet, yesterday he, we talked to him. He said I had a plan to win the game in Buffalo. He could he could see how they could win it. So I said, well, what about this game? He goes, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know. He says I just hope that somewhere we get out there, make some plays. I hope we find a way to get it done because I don't think he could really spot a weakness in the Denver team. He was just hoping his guys would rise to the occasion and some guys make some big plays and you know the quarterback has been the biggest so far Mark Grinnell is keeping this team in the game by eluding the pressure and making plays ruined a punt to Chris Hudson. Off the side of the foot dying spiral and Hudson fair catches it right at his spot the 11 yard line they'll give him and with uh, 57 seconds left Mark Brunel takes the field of Tom Coughlin has gotten so much criticism about being a disciplinarian and when you look at these guys you could see his coaching in his team they are truly disciplined players they have not gotten away from their game plan they're doing the things that they came into this game to do and are within two points of the Broncos now and thus far no mistakes and that was a concern of Coughlin especially Brunel who has thrown some tough interceptions to come state from means and means with a running start all the way out to the 35 yard line they're going to spot his knee down 33. Aldridge and Braxton make the tackle. Jacksonville with no timeouts. And Grinnell has to shout out the call to his wide receiver as he drops back in the shotgun with 36 seconds. Slips, scrambles, throws downfield. Wide open is Jimmy Smith. And Smith is out of bounds at the Denver 24. Jacksonville called the timeout before Denver punted. For the reason why, take a chance with a run, get in position to make something happen. The run happens, and watch Jimmy Smith at the top of your screen. Brunel gets out of the pocket, makes the corner come up. Nobody back there to cover the wide receiver. Those are the kind of things that happen with a scrambling quarterback. The defense breaks down. And this is what the defensive secondary coaches tell you. They say, what we have to do with a guy like Brunel, you must be patient. Stay with your man. Don't think you're going to come up and make the play on Brunel. Get back and stay with your man. Be disciplined. They're in field goal range after that 43-yard play, and Smith can't handle that one. Covered by Lionel Washington. Lionel Washington at that corner uh, talks about him retiring. He went to Tulane and is from New Orleans and said, uh, I guess if uh, Lionel number 48 for the Broncos, if I can uh, get to the Super Bowl and win it in my hometown, that might be a message for me to then uh, hang it up. One thing here with Brunel and just taking a look at what he's got in front of him, Phil, it's second down. He's got 20 seconds. He's got a chance to go at least twice to the end zone. 20 seconds left. 
You don't want to get caught in the middle of the field though with no timeouts. Brunel throws it away. McCardell was the closest receiver. All right, that took six. Alfred right. Williams was the man pursuing Brunel. Good job by Alfred Williams. That time he kept. We, we've seen him get caught inside. Let Brunel get outside. He stays out there. Brunel wants to break the pocket, but Alfred Williams makes him throw it away. Look at number 91. Jumps and then he's still in good position to make the quarterback throw it away and then says, Hey, well, that's a good point. If he gets caught inside, then Brunel has a lot of room. This will be spotted at the 32, a 42 yarder to give Jacksonville the lead. Mike Hollis to kick. A knuckler and it is good. Jacksonville 13, Denver 12. Repeat that, Paul. A lot of people wouldn't believe that if they're just doing it now. And you know uh, what? Here's a team Jacksonville comes in and boy don't you love it. They're a 14 point underdog coming into this game. Nobody in this country would give them a chance to win this football game. And well there's another 30 minutes and 10 seconds left to play folks. But just take a look at this. This little line drive shot right here. What a, I mean right down the middle. And they take the lead at 13 12. Now we saw something like this happen a week ago in Pittsburgh Indianapolis. They came back and got Pittsburgh in, in the first half went ahead. There's a long 30 minutes to go. Well Mike Shanahan told us the wild card Mike Brunel I mean Mark Brunel got to keep him under control. They have not done that. Hey that's the biggest and, and the biggest reason by far that Denver's losing this game right now. The other thing that, that, that what these guys have done from Jacksonville. Florida they've taken this crowd totally out of this ball game. Well they've done something else uh, those early jitters on the road underdog team young team fairly inexperienced playoff they drop behind two touchdowns but Clyde Simmons blocking the extra point changes it a little bit because then they have to go for two Denver on their second touchdown don't convert so it's 12 nothing and in the second quarter all the scoring belongs to Jacksonville all 13 points going to the Jaguars two field goals and a touchdown and this young man it, it, how can you not think of Steve Young when you see him play the young Steve Young quick and strong armed and uh, uh, clever Hollis will just skid one down through hoping to check any long return picked up by the tight end Byron Chamberlain tackled at the 35 with five seconds left Dane uh, Darren stood still made the stop for Jacksonville the one thing about to Brunel Phil the guy threw for forty three hundred yards <laughs> I mean uh, those weren't gimmies this guy can, can really play I mean the thing that oh. makes him so good he's so mobile oh well, he's he's the best player in the team so give the best player the opportunity to make the plays and that's what this coaching staff does and you know you've got to commend them for it and he's hey he does a good job with the football that's why they keep giving him those opportunities no long game of play by Elway he takes the kneel down the end of the half and a surprising score in bright lights here at Mile High Stadium Mark Brunel and the Jacksonville Jaguars with 13 unanswered points in the second quarter own the lead 13 to 12. Welcome back to Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Broncos will get the ball first to open the second half. First, let's look at the Coors Light halftime statistics. Very even, as is the score. No turnovers. And Jacksonville playing basically Denver even with a great second quarter after the Broncos opened with a flourish. A couple of touchdowns, but unable to convert the two extra points. Well, I think the, the both coaches told us the same thing. If we don't turn the ball, ball over, we should win the football game. Well, neither team has turned the ball over, and it's a one-point game. Any feelings about this second half? Well, a lot of feelings. I mean, it, it's sounds great contain Mark Brunel but you can see physically for the players even when they get in position he's so good so athletic they can't get the job done so maybe it's time for Denver to come up with a new plan Hollis sends it into the shadows of the northern end of my life Vaughn Hebron 25 30 sees a seam one man to beat and Hollis is able to trip him up a flag is down Mike Hollis did a great job of uh, Denying Hebron. Of course, the penalty is going to bring it back anyway, but it appeared Hebron had a touchdown until uh, Hollis stuck his head in there. Coming back, says Red Cash. Well, a couple of key penalties now. One denying Denver an interception when they led 12 0, would have had the ball at the 25 of Jacksonville. And now this one will take it back and uh, deny the Broncos' field position. During the return, holding number 94 by the receivers. 10 yards, first down at 10. Jeff Robinson. 
No. Number 94, there he is right at the bottom of the screen. You see his arms wrapped around, he's holding. You're right out in the middle of the field, you just can't do it. That takes it all the way back to the Denver 17 for Elway. Terrell Davis, who rushed for 71 yards in the first half with him. And he gets the ball. Davis to the 20 yard line, a gain of three. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Dick. I spoke to Mike Shanahan. He said he's not overly concerned. He said if we play our game in the second half, we will win this game. Very concerned about the tackling. Told his guys they must tackle better. As for trying to stop Mark Brunel, he says we've just got to try and limit his big plays. He knows that he's not going to be able to stop him. He says if we stop Natron Means a little bit better, Brunel won't be as wild. Dick? All right, thank you, Jim. Shanahan, a uh, worried look on his face. No one has stopped Means uh, during this winning streak. Elway well protected, throws incomplete. Might have been deflected by Tom McManus in front of the receiver. You know, you talk about what is an, an important drive. This is an important drive for Denver for the simple reason. Here's a young team, and you don't want them to get the feeling they can win this football game. If they stop you on the first drive and you're home, I'm going to tell you what, you put a whole lot of confidence in that defense and offense. And after Denver started with 186 yards in the opening uh, 143 yards in the opening quarter had only 45 yards and two first downs in the entire second period. Third and seven for Elway out of the shotgun. Throws underneath the Shannon Sharp and Sharp with a first down to the 33. 13 on the play. They got that offense that you that you like. These five guys wide. Denver puts five wide receivers out in the field and they spread. Look at the five wide receivers. Watch the blitz from up top. But the problem is it just creates too many holes down the field. Look at Shannon Sharp. Nobody around him. The five wide receivers cover the whole field. It's very tough on the defense. He had actually two choices on that play. Only the second catch for Sharp. One of those, of course, earlier for the touchdown. The Craver. 30. 46 yard line tackled by Kevin Hardy. Beasley Reeves. Thanks a lot, Dick. I spoke to Tom Coughlin. He said he told his players to score zero to zero. There was no halftime celebration for the Jaguars. They are not surprised that they're leading the football game. He said the key in the first half was the two big defensive stops and two big runs by Natron Means. Back to you. All right, Beasley. It must have been a different Coughlin than the one in the preseason. I guess he threw the Gatorade bucket and raised Kane in the final preseason game of the year. He got their attention and the they wound up beating Denver in that game. Second and seven. Three in the back. Away. Trap caught. Down he goes. Body slammed by Eddie Robinson. Robinson, who had only one sack all season, gets one today. Well, this is the zone blitz for the Jaguars. Watch the defensive ends drop off the blitz from the outside. Denver, this is a big problem for the Denver offense. That's one of the reasons why they wanted to spread the field so it'd be harder for that defense to cover the receivers on that zone blitz. So the Jaguars were last in the league a year ago, only 17 sacks. They added that by some 20, and that's Simmons and Brackens and Hardy, three new faces. Third down and eight. The throw incomplete. Miller with a one-handed stab at it, unable to pull it in as Bucky Brooks uh, nickel back in to cover. And Elway gets up with a gimpy uh, walk. Well, only four rushers, and the Jaguars getting confident, getting some pressure on the quarterback with four rushers. Jeff Lagerman getting around the corner against Roderick Thompson. And again, Tom Coughlin said Jeff Lagerman not getting the sacks, but doing a lot of good things for our defense. Rowan to punt to Chris Hudson, who stands at the 22. But the momentum continues for Jacksonville. Dying spiral for a catch at the 24 by Hudson. Back in Denver. I thought the third point, Mike Ditka's third point, yeah. trying to remind us that Jacksonville, of their 17 games this year, all but three were decided late in the fourth quarter. This is a team that plays you to the very end. They lead 13 12. First possession, second half. Natron breaks the tackle. 35. And Natron Means has a first down at the 37 yard line. Means from the University of North Carolina now with 92 yards after that run. Brunel bumps it underneath. Means again. And he has another first down at the 49 yard line. Boldly the tackler. I'll tell you what's got to be a little scary for Denver, Phil. 
Jacksonville's making this thing look easy. They made it look easy on defense. They stopped them right right away. And now they're just moving down the field. Natron Meads comes out. Brunel is looking. He's the only other guy in the, and the only guy in the backfield with Brunel. He goes out. It's a little dump pass. And he picks up the first down. Again, the men in the secondary forced to make the stop. 136 total yards for Means and a touchdown. 13 12, Jacksonville. 10 50 left in the third. Brunel knocked down by Alfred Williams, and that's what he does so well. Former high school basketball star in Houston, Texas, Williams with another bat down. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, old Mobley, number 51, was looking outside like he was in a position to pick this ball up. But this is your best defense right here. Alfred Williams going up, knocking the ball out of the way. That time, Baselli didn't get his hands on him until after the ball was knocked down. Alfred with a big smile and one of the biggest laughs in the league. What a delightful young guy he is. He is happy. Not happy to see Means tear into that line again to the 45. A gain of almost a seven. Dick, isn't it interesting what he gave up to come to Denver, or first to go to San Francisco, and then here in Denver? Oh, Alfred Williams. Yes. Yeah, that's unbelievable. That's last year. Cincinnati offered him with a bonus two and a half million dollars. He said no and played for four hundred thousand in San Francisco and said it was a good move. Because it got me here and I learned a lot in one year in San Francisco. Third and three. Quick pass complete to Willie Jackson. Jackson still alive and finally down at the 33 yard line. Randy Hilliard made the tackle. Well, it's a good job of Jacksonville recognizing the blitz. They got a, a quick pass on with the five wide receivers. Watch Steve Atwater comes through free. Mark Brunell knows it. Nobody on the inside receiver gets rid of the football quickly, gets the, gets the completion. James Stewart rel uh, relieves Natron Means. Stewart, number 33, the lone running back. First down at the 33. It's his call. The leading rusher this year for the Jaguars with 723 yards. Stewart, who led also a, a year ago as a rookie out of Tennessee, and number one and gets just some minimal yards, maybe two. Michael Dean Perry, the tackler. Now, first down, the Denver Broncos seem to be doing all right on defense. They hold them to a one or two yard game. It's second and third down, it's killing them. Both wide receivers to the right. Pete Mitchell lined up on the left. And now McCardell in motion. Brunel. Going long for McCardell. Touchdown. If they call it, was he inbounds? No call yet. They look at each other, the two officials. No signal. It's a touchdown. touchdown. Never again. 31 yards on the run. Mark Brunel. What a perfect throw to McCardell. Caught the ball just inches from that baseline. Well, again, the movement of Mark Brunell. McCardell down in the end zone. Lionel Washington right on him. Goes up, and that's going up and getting after the ball. That's the reason. And, and getting both feet down for yeah, the touchdown. Yeah, th that's what the two officials were discussing, Dick. It wasn't the fact that he caught the ball. They were, they were One said to the other one, did he get both feet down? And they did, and it was an excellent call. Mike Hollis, that's the point. And it is good. Barely did he have a mean hook on that one and is able to get it through. 20 unanswered points by the young Jacksonville Jaguars. Hollis skips one through. It's Patrick Jeffers, a wide receiver, and having troubles. Digs his way down at the 23-yard line. When you look at the touchdown play by the, by the Jacksonville Jaguars, you're the quarterback, Mark Brunelli, drops back. He's looking down the field. He spots the receivers. He's stopping right there. Everybody's covered. He has to get outside and make a play because there's nothing downfield open. And that was creating a touchdown, 31 yards. And now Denver from the 22. Jarrell Davis able to get three, almost four yards before Paul Fraze, a veteran former Jet, makes the tackle. All right, watch James Stewart here, number 33 on Romanowski, 53. Romanowski gets taken inside. Now, he's, his job is to get outside and do not allow, allow Brunel to get outside. When he does that, touchdown. Well, this kid really does have a nice arm, doesn't he? He just flicked that ball on the run and was right there for McCarda. Well, that was Tom Coughlin's first priority, I think, when he got down there. He spotted him as a backup at Green Bay. 
And he judged him and says, that's the guy I want being my quarterback. Blitz second and six, and Davis able to squeak it out to the 30, two yards shy of a first down. Ivan John Yurkovich, the veteran from Eastern Illinois, and on that tackle with Kevin Hardy. There's a, he used to have a radio show up in Green Bay, yakking with Yurko, and boy, he, he yeah, you know, yak. I'll tell you what, Yurko walked in a meeting. You don't even have to ask him a question. <laughs> he walks in and sits down, and he's, what do you boys need? <laughs> and he starts. He just starts. I love his all-time dream. If we get time, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Third and two. No way on the shotgun. Third and two. Throws underneath, complete to Miller, and that should be enough. Needed two, got three. Bucky Brooks made the tackle. Dick, the only thing that I don't like about this ball game for Denver is this: that Jacksonville's making it look easy when they have the ball, and on defense, how, what a good job they're doing. And Denver's struggling. I mean, they needed. Uh, two yards on a play, they get three, and it was a struggle getting it. But it's important. The Denver offense, they needed that first down to get back in rhythm, get some confidence, and it kind of opens up the playbook for Mike Shanahan where he can call more plays because finally he got some success. Less than seven minutes left in the third. Jacksonville leading 20 to 12. Play action to Davis, then throw to Davis. Complete. What a good solid open field tackle by Kevin Hardy. He has made plenty today. This rookie from Illinois drafted as the second player in the draft this last spring from Evansville, Indiana, the home base of Wayne Weaver, the owner of the Jaguars, made his fortune in women's sh shoes. Well, Kevin Hardy, the number one draft pick by the Jaguars. Tom Coughlin says he has been everything we expected and more. Great speed, runs around. He's a rookie, always doesn't know what he's doing, but that speed really helps him out a lot. And there's Chairman of Board Weaver. Team playing beyond all of expectations. Again to Davis, again tackled immediately, this time by Eddie Robinson, shy of the 40 yard line where it'll be third down and three Denver. You know what's amazing about this team, Dick? If you look at Kevin Hardy when you saw his numbers up there, he's tied for the lead in this on this team with interceptions, with two. But only two. I mean, these guys, they play close to the best. They're just a tough football team. You know, you talk about one of these they'll bend a little bit, but they don't break. That's these guys. They don't. Yeah, they had only 13 interceptions all season. That compared with Denver, uh, 23. Fake to Davis. Throw almost intercepted. Knocked in the air by, oh, there's a flag. Aaron Beasley, and they may get Beasley. Early contact on Anthony Miller. <laughs> Can I tell you what? This is the first time I've seen a ball all thrown all year long, Phil, with, that it hits a guy in the hands that probably was uncatchable. <laughs> John Elway fired this ball. Second penalty for the game for Jacksonville. Pass interference, number 21 on the defense. First down. All right, Red. Red going out, crowing. Yeah. <laughs> His final game as an NFL referee. Well, much Beasley, hard. number 21, against Anthony Miller. The problem is, he sees it, and I don't know. There's no contact. There's nothing. There's nothing, and it wasn't even catchable. I guess the angle the referee had, he thought he bumped the receiver, but he did not touch him. Well, that uh, negates the one in the first half and went the other way. As uh, for Wall Davis, unable to get that one. Elway had unload with Tom McManus all over him. I think that Elway saw Dana Hall out there on, on Davis. He was still there trying to throw a little fly pattern to Anthony Miller down the right hand side, a little fake and go. And when that wasn't there, he looked out to Terrell Davis and he saw Hall number 28 standing there. I might as well throw this baby away. It's, it's only first down. Last time the Broncos lost a playoff game at home. The only time they had was 1984, 12 years ago to Pittsburgh. They went into that game 13 and 3 as they did today. Davis. Brackens in the backfield for the tackle. The man who led his team in tackles for loss. This young 22 year old from the University of Texas. Tony Brackens, number 90. Good speed, good instincts. Sees the draw play coming to the outside, and Terrell Davis cannot outrun him. And the Denver Bronco offense and team, all the great success this year. As you watch them, you can see they lack confidence, trying to find out what can we do to get something going against this Jaguar defense. See, Bracken's listed 266. He said, I'm about 255. I got to work on my weight. This has been a long year this yeah. rookie season. Third and 15 for Elway. Throws deep. Beasley, Aaron Beasley breaks that one up. 
intended for Rod Smith and the Broncos have to bring on the punting team with four and a half left in the third Jacksonville's defense you can see it they are going to do one thing right now we are not giving up big plays you could tell the whole drive and Beasley third and 15 hey he stays back about 17 or 18 yards wait for the throw drive up and try to get the ball Ruin to punt Chris Hudson at the 14. Smothered at about the 13. The hot team, six wins in a row. Hot here in Denver. Last four possessions, four scores, 20 unanswered points. And now Brunel takes over at his 13 yard line. Slow start, two for six. And he's been making plays ever since. Natron. He gets only to the 10 yard line. I tell you, it is really noisy down in that end zone down there, and, and this is what Jacksonville's trying to do. They're trying to run some time off the clock, and they also are trying to run the ball. Natron means is just having a terrific football game, and if they can get him to the outside and not worry too much about getting him inside, I think he'll be all right. Means now with 101 yards against the league's best defense against the rush. Cardell. Cardell, the only Jaguar to the Pro Bowl, the first for Jacksonville. Watch Keenan McCardell on the outside. It's a short drop by Mark Winnell. Good protection. He did a good job of getting inside. It's a little low. He goes down. Just can't make the catch because the throw is not up high enough. Is it surprising that the quarterback that threw the most yardage in, in, in a season is not even at the Pro Bowl? Three other quarterbacks ahead of him, and he just didn't believe. Third down and eight. Means makes a tackle. Rumbles out across the 25-yard line, and a safety has to tackle him again. Tyrone Braxton and Mean smile getting bigger and bigger. Well, it, it's a good call, but what it is, it's a safe call. The crowd is against you. It's a trap inside. You can see Rich Tilski coming across. Dan Williams just overruns the play. Jacksonville is running that play because they don't want anything bad to happen. Yeah, they think it might work, but the reason is they they don't want Denver to get a big play, get the momentum, and make something good happen. And you, what you've got, you've got some Denver Bronco defensive guys who are trying to do things they're not supposed to be doing. You've got to take your lane and stay in your lane. 17 more yards for Means. Brunel guns this one, and it's complete. But to be McCardell again, it is tackled by Torrey James, 11 yards, another Jacksonville first down. Late in the third quarter, 20 to 12. You know, Phil, what a what a great throw that was. Mark Brunel just just waited and waited and waited and then threw the ball. That's patience. Well, it was a three-step drop. It should have happened right away. It didn't, but he had good patience, like you said, Paul, let the receiver get inside where there's an opening. Come out in a power formation. Two tight ends left. McCardell to the right. And give it to Means. And he's out to the 43 yard line. A five yard pickup on first down. Another safety tackle. Braxton makes the stop. Natron, uh, the reason why San Diego got discouraged with him uh, one was problems with his agent, the other was they felt he was heavy and didn't work hard. And none of those things were true when he arrived at Jacksonville, according to Tom Coughlin. Well, Tom Coughlin also said, I brought him in my office. I sat down. I said, Hey, listen, here's the way it's going to be. This is the way I run my show. You do it my way, you stay here. If you don't, get out. He said he lost weight. He's been a model player. Second and five. Stewart now in the backfield. Slips as he tries to make his cut and he's grounded by Braxton. Well, again, Denver's been fine on first and second down. Third down, they've been getting into a lot of trouble. And they're getting in trouble because the guys are not playing the defense that's designed. James Stewart at 224 pounds, unable to get that weight going back the other way. Field has been resided and uh, some of the footing not as solid as the players would like. 
Jacksonville is five for nine on third downs today. You know, looking for the quick pass, and then goes long, and the man open. Out of bounds is Willie Jackson. He's open again behind Lionel. No, they say he didn't get both feet down. Lionel Washington was covering, and Jackson apparently crowding that sideline, just unable to get the second foot down. And boy, that uh, sigh of relief from 76,000 here in Denver. I'll tell you, what a beautiful throw. What a great throw. Willie Jackson going down the field. The right foot's in. The left foot never gets down. Good call. Didn't drag the left foot. So the punt by Brian Barker, a flag down. Beautiful high kick. Brad Smith, fair catch at the seven yard line. 50 yard punt, no return. Will it count? 46 seconds now showing time remaining in the third. Red. Red and I had kind of jog alike, you know what? <laughs> a nice slow paced jog. Still makes us home in College Station, Texas. Oh, that's Texas A&M. That's, that's a sprint for you. <laughs> kind of. That's going to deny Barker a terrific punt. The legal man downfield. So they'll bring it back and make Barker punt it once more. Dick, you know in the last play. 12 men on the field. Oh. By the kickers. Five yards, still fourth down. Barker says I he said I counted there were only 11 one five on the line six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven up top I only see eleven five, six, I counted seven. the punter in the back I, I counted eleven here's a better look at well you can't tell right now what the so Barker uh, a solid student at Santa Clara those were different Broncos and Barker, yeah, the official is saying, wait a minute, maybe I miscounted these guys. There were only 11. The other way. The no. receivers had 12 men, not the kickers. Well, that, uh, <laughs> that makes a lot of folks feel better in that study. Of yeah, I was, I was feeling bad about my counting. I said, well, maybe I don't see somebody. But there well, was... it's still going to be fourth down. It'll be fourth and five instead of fourth and ten. But the, what they want to do is make sure the kick stays downfield. Sure. Yeah, but it was third and five. The, first of all, they'd have to measure to see if it's a first down. And then uh, there was a terrific punt. If it isn't a first down, you take the. Uh, the only problem the is, kick. Dick, that they had already me measured off the one penalty. So they moved the ball back. Now, where was the ball marked? No, it was third down and five. And he punted the ball. Excuse me, I mean fourth and five when he punted the ball. I'm saying they've already marked the penalty off to fourth and made it fourth and ten. So but it now is where was the ball before they marked it off? Now he's got to go back and take it the same steps because they don't have it marked. Well, let's uh, we have the luxury of a replay. It's right on the 43 yard line. 43 yard line exactly. So you give him five yards from there well, to the 48, and that would be a very interesting measure. It is. A, it, it'll, it'll be, be right down. on the nose of the ball, and I, I'm telling you, it'll it'll be a if it's going to be marked there and where the marker is over here, it'll be a first down. Yep, they measured on the sidelines, and that's exactly the case. And the fans aren't going to like this announcement from Red Cashin because it is going to be first down. On the kick, there were 12 men on the defense, number 95. Did not get off the field. It's a five yard penalty. First down. Number 95 is Michael Dean Perry. There's 11 people. Watch Michael Dean Perry at the bottom of your screen. He's trying to hustle off, but he doesn't make it before the snap of the ball. In fact, hustle, he's walking off. And that costs his team. And Jacksonville. Gladly accepts the first down with less than a minute remaining in the third and the Jaguars building momentum here with a 2012 lead against a two touchdown favorite on its home field Denver the throw open again McCardell survives the double hit and pulled down at the 45 with a gain of eight make it seven the thing you saw in that last play Mark Brunel he can run around. But you can see the strength of his arm and you know you talk about he looks like Steve Young and he you know he's left handed and he can run. I tell you it reminds me a lot of Brett Favre. He can move around he makes a lot of big plays throwing the football and he has a strong arm. How about accurate. 
Pretty accurate. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, so. you got to be pretty accurate to throw for 4,300 yards. They don't have to. The clock, game clock, and play clock are almost in sequence, and uh, they don't have to run a play. So they can let the clock run out. We'll have a second and three when the fourth quarter begins. And the drama builds. 20 to 12. Jacksonville after Denver owned the first quarter. Unable to convert two extra points. Donnell, second and three. Out of the backfield and incomplete. So Lachey Maston is uh, first opportunity to touch the ball today, or they had one running opportunity. A very big play, and yet it was only a little point. Clyde Simmons, 96. You see him lined up right over center. Gets good penetration, terrific timing, and the big right hand bats away the extra point on the Denver's first touchdown. Then on the second, they had to go for two. Shannon Chart handcuffed by this bullet from Elway. So it's 12 0. But Denver seemed to have the game in control, but somehow psychologically, that missed extra point comes back to haunt you. McCardell out of bounds, first down at the 41 yard line. And uh, you were making the point, Phil Simmons that there are a lot of little things that have gone down against Denver today for a, a team with such a good record. Well we saw him Dick penalties stupid penalties you know Michael Dean not hustling off the field it's big right here driving his football drop passes something they haven't done drop passes by the Stars. Shannon Sharp dropping two that have played an important role in this game so far and the Jaguars showing why they've won six in a row and off means just pushes down one defender and then Sneaks under a couple others to the 39, a gain of two. Steve Atwater, uh, he doesn't miss too many, but uh, able to. Was that the straight man who uh, took the straight arm? Boy, that that in itself is a yeah. classic to see him go down from a straight arm. Well, Michael Dean Perry comes in, and he all he's going for is the quarterback. He goes right by Natron Means. And he would have had him in the backfield for about a five-yard loss, but he went straight for the quarterback and not for the running back. Jimmy Smith to the right, McCardell to the left, second and eight. Means wrapped up after a yard game. Good defensive play by Lodish and Perry, the two tackles for Denver. One thing about Brunel that, that I'm seeing, Phil, is, is uh, he may be a young quarterback, but man, is he reading the blitzes. He's picking up everything. He's seen him. Uh, uh, the, the play to uh, uh, McCardell for the first down just two plays ago, three plays ago, was a perfect example of reading the blitz and taking that little short out, pick up the first down. Leading by eight. Third and seven. Brunel signaling not for timeout, but he was signaling formation. He had three wides to the left, then had to signal timeout. The number one seed in the AFC, Denver Broncos, trailing at home by eight in the fourth quarter. Not often that opponents agree on an issue, but you think that uh, New England and Pittsburgh aren't watching today, unanimous in how they're cheering. The winner to meet the winner of this one. And if it's Jacksonville, either the Patriots or Steelers would get home field. Third down and seven. Under pressure. Running right by a tackler goes James Stewart. And Stewart, nicknamed Big Man or Little Man, is playing Big Man. His daddy called him Little Man, has a first down. It appeared that a Bronco had a short tackle on him. Well, what happened? It was man coverage. Bill Romanowski has the back. Look at him, go with him. But Tony Baselli comes off of his pass rusher, gets him outside. Now there's nobody to account for James Stewart. I'll tell you what a great call. That's a screen pass, one of the first ones we've seen today. Not only a good call, but you've got to have a talented left tackle, athletic, right. to make that play. Boy, Boselli really did make the play. Now it's James Stewart again. And he's to the nine-yard line before Lodish can make the stop. And that's not good news. The top tackler in the secondary for the Broncos, pro bowler Steve Atwater, limps off. This has become a shocking wow. game. Eight point lead well into field goal range at the nine yard line, the Jaguars. But it did. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, and, and the layoff did not hurt the Broncos. We talked about it. Hey, the Broncos came out on both sides of the ball, were extremely sharp, got the lead, got everything they wanted. Jacksonville has just outplayed them since then. 15th play of this drive for Jacksonville. Second and six from the nine. Good. Picking his way 
close to the five yard line. They're going to call me down at the six. It'll be uh, two, two and a half yards from a first down. You know, Dick, it, we talked about Tony Baselli so much we showed enough of him. Maybe not enough of him. We're going to show more because we'll be doing better plays. But when he walked in and sat down in that meeting yesterday, the final thing he said was, We're going to win. We're going to win. We didn't come up here to celebrate a wild card uh, 14 point underdog and say, gee, we've had a great year. Let's lose to the heavily favored Broncos. Third and three. Scored again. Hit in the backfield. Breaks the tackle. Is to the four yard line. Whistled down. It'll be short of a first down. So Tom Coughlin looks at fourth and one, but with an eight point lead, you within range it. of a touchdown and two point conversion, take the field goal and make the other team score twice. You bet. You don't even hesitate because no, what right. this does for the Broncos, that means the Broncos have to score a touchdown and two, and two points, and then a field goal to just tie them. Are you sure? Yeah, uh, I'm right. This uh, I've, been, uh, I've been adding this baby up for weeks, and I got this one right now. Yeah. That eighth grade arithmetic has been tough. Oh, it's been killing me. Hollis from 22. He's got it. He's three for three. Hit the long ones earlier. Some drive by Jacksonville that was extended when Michael Dean Perry failed to get off the field on the punt, and uh, that gave Jacksonville a second chance. They go 88 yards, 17 plays, took eight and a half minutes. And now lead 23 to 12. 23 unanswered points and five straight possessions for Jacksonville in which they've scored. Ellis, one hops it to the 30 and 40, 43 yard line goes Keith Burns with a rare chance to return a kickoff, the linebacker from Oklahoma State. Back to all the NFL games that I've been fortunate to cover. That to me in many ways is the most memorable that first down in 98 engineered by Elway to get a tie and beating the Browns in overtime. He hits Ed McCaffrey right at the sticks that will be close to a first down depending on the mark at the 48 47 yard line. Davis and Hardy the tackles. Ed McCaffrey not afraid to go over the middle. He's a big target and John Elway throws a strike in here this time. Protect the football once you catch it. It's going to take a lot of plays to score this touchdown. Don't try to be a hero. Second and one as we approach the 10 minute mark. Terrell Davis slips through to the 36 yard line. And Davis, who has been quiet since one long run of over 40 yards in the opening quarter, has a first down. You got an injured Jacksonville player. Clyde Simmons, the veteran defensive end, is uh, injured. Good block by Broderick Thompson to seal it off is the young Jaguars rooting for the defense. 9.59 left in the fourth. Elway ready to go when we come back. They're watching the Jumbotron at Jacksonville Municipal Stadium. And so far, like what they see with 9.59 left, it's 23.12. They say well over 5,000 rooting as company. Well, we were looking Old at that field. thing, and you made a comment, Phil, that you saw a lot of Tony Baselli jerseys in the stands. When was the last time you saw anybody buy an offensive <laughs> lineman's jersey? <laughs> Meanwhile, John Elway, first down at the Jacksonville 36. He throws off the back foot long for McCaffrey, but McCaffrey was looking inside the throw and outside. Mickey Washington covering. Calvin Pritchett got through number 94 on Elway and Elway had to unload the ball. You know we were talking about how confident that Jacksonville was. We talked yesterday not really you know, overconfident but confident. I never saw Denver more relaxed than when we talked to them the other day. I thought that they were ready for this game. All right. To the flat to Davis. Inside and tackled at the 34 yard line. Tom McManus down low with a hit. Aaron Beasley, a good job turning the play in. Well, that play illustrated this Jacksonville defense today, not giving up the big plays when they have a chance to make the tackles. They're doing it. No cheap yards by the Denver offense so far. Third down, eight for Elway. Shotgun. Roots one complete. Rod Smith breaks out of the tackle. Inside the 20, first down Denver. Well, 
Well, this play, it's only a completion because of the strength of John Elway's arm. There's not that big of a seam in the defense, but he lets it go, and it is right on the money again. And then Rod Smith does a good job of keeping his balance and getting a few extra yards. Look at how Craver comes in and gets a block for him. 15 yards, first catch for Smith. Elway under pressure, throws it off a lineman, Broderick Thompson. That'll cost Elway a penalty. Elway just instinctively throwing at the first jersey you could see as he was about to be sacked. And threw it uh, right at Jeff Logaman. What he was trying to do is Terrell Davis oh, was way out. Touch. The penalty is loss of a down. Second down. The Broderick Thompson said, what, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Elway did it. What he's trying to do is Terrell Davis was way out to his right. You see him number 30 in the bottom of your screen right here. And John Elway is just trying to throw, throw the ball. But it slips out of his hands. And it hits Thompson right in the face. Broderick Thompson said, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm standing here. I think he should have caught it. So it only cost <laughs> him an incomplete pass. No penalty with it. Second and ten. Anthony Miller to the right. McCaffrey left. Craver and Davis with LA. Blitz. Picked up well. Thrown underneath complete to McCaffrey. He's down at the 15-yard line. Five yards short of a first down. Jacksonville loves to blitz inside with the two linebackers. They come with it. Denver, excellent job. Once the linebackers come on the blitz, they pick it up. Shannon Sharp is going down the field. Elway waits a second longer. He would have seen Shannon Sharp open for the touchdown behind. Big play, third and six. Clyde Simmons back in for Jacksonville. Elway going to run it. Now he throws. Complete to McCaffrey at the four. And Elway did stay behind the line of scrimmage. The one thing, McCaffrey, we've seen this guy do this more than one time this year. And McCaffrey will get himself open. And he knows Elway's scrambling. He comes across the middle. Now watch him sit in there. He looks, he sees Elway. Now he gets himself open, sits down, and Elway finds him at the three yard line. Line of scrimmage was a 15. Elway threw it from the 16. First and goal at the two. to that last field goal and stopping the string of 23 straight points scored by Jacksonville and now the Broncos go for two. Right away from the shotgun and Jacksonville calls time. Seven thirty seven midpoint of the fourth quarter and John Elway a big two point conversion attempt that would pull the Broncos within a field goal or they'll trail by five and need Two field goals or a touchdown with a half a quarter remaining. Elway shotgun spread formation. Now that was a gutsy call. An eight point play for Terrell Davis. Touchdown plus two. What makes that play so good, the call so good, the defense, it takes them too long to react because they don't know where the football is. The linebackers, they're standing there, they wait for the offensive line to come and block them because they didn't know where the ball was. John Elway just went into the locker room. Elway carried out his fake, and obviously everyone in the stadium, including Jacksonville, looking at him. But when you know when you see it, you're, Phil, you're absolutely right about it. It's the defense of the secondary and the linebackers. Watch them. They, they really don't know where the ball is right now. And then the blocking is so good in the offensive line. Terrell Davis is there for the touchdown. Tom Coughlin trying to use that body English to help out the defense, but an eight-point play. Davis gets the touchdown and the conversion. Has 110 total yards now. The NFL's Offensive Player of the Year, Terrell Davis, in his second season out of Georgia by way of Cal State Long Beach. Now this crowd having difficulty sitting down. Bucky Brooks comes out. 
has a seam and out to the 26 yard line. You know the Denver Broncos got eight points but think, think back since the first quarter Dick the Broncos haven't been able to slow this Jacksonville offense down. They've scored every possession since the first quarter Jacksonville means and the big power back able to manage only a yard Jim Gray. Steve Atwater is on the Broncos bench right now. Atwater has a bruised right thigh. It is very questionable as to if he'll return right now. Tim Houck is in the game. Dick. All right, the veteran Hawk from uh, Montana, an unrestricted free agent from Green Bay a year ago. There he is. More of a special teamer this year. Listen to this crap. Pick up the blitz and Brunel scrambling and slides at the 40 yard line. Hawk there to cover him first down. So Romanowski on the blitz. They pick it up and that left a big avenue for the sprinting Brunel. Well, watch Bill Romanowski come on the outside. He's coming so fast he can't get under control. And look at the hole that's created for Mark Brunel. He just was going to take on Natron. Watch this. He goes right after Natron. He doesn't even look at the quarterback. I'm just going to knock him down. And when he does that, Brunel's gone. Third scramble, only 18 yards rushing for Brunel, who led all quarterbacks almost 400 yards in the season. Means finds a little hole, runs through a tackle, makes something out of nothing, though. For 240 pounder, Means has uh, the feet of Gene Kelly. He can really study. It's that Barry Sanders stutter step. But don't try to block Natron Means. What you've got to do is wrap your eyes around him. Watch number 37 hop when he comes in here. Here comes Means. Now watch what he tries to do. Block him. You've got to grab hold of this guy. A gain of almost five. Call it second and five. What a day for Means again. He gets the call. Off left tackle. Runs through a Bronco to the 50. They'll spot it at the 49. It'll be very close to a first down. Tyrone Braxton able to make the stop. And uh, this one probably will call for measurement. Well, what you see there is just a big offensive line with a big back behind it, and they're just overpowering the front of the, D, uh, the Denver Broncos. Time now becomes so critical. 5:25 left in the fourth, a three-point game. Jacksonville with the ball and the lead. Let's see if this is third and inches or first down, Jaguars. First down. There's a 35 pound difference in the offensive line and the defensive line Phil and with Natron means behind that they ran right behind Baselli. after they run this play here they'll be inside the five minutes this defense has to hold right now not in this series dip right here first second and third down and make him turn the ball over. Only a yard at the 50 tripped up by Alan Aldridge and Tyrone Braxton back in comes the big man Natron means that water for that injury now a spectator watching the, the jumbotron here at Mile High Stadium well it's a big loss for them not to have their top tackle in the secondary. Means in second and nine. Four and a half minutes left. Trying to keep the ball away from Elway. Brunel slips away. What a move. Still on his feet to the sidelines at the 40. Another block. Brunel 30, 25, and dives at the 21. Oh, my. What a. Again, it's almost the identical play that we saw earlier. They blitzed. They got a lot of people at the line of scrimmage. They talked about we got to keep Mark Brunell in the pocket. Watch the lane. He has to run in again. Not good distribution by the front of the Denver Broncos. And then Mark Brunell, with his talent, makes a lot of people miss. All right, now watch, that, watch number 87. Here he is on the top of the screen. Less than four minutes and less overtime to decide. A team season. Ronell the star has a first down for Jacksonville at Denver's 21. Three tight ends. And Natron. 
who dives to the 19 yard line a gain of two. Oh, that run by Mark Ronell. It's like call up the highlight reel company. I got something for you. Well, it is. And the good thing, the what he's done today really well. He's managing the game. He drops back. He knows the situation. Take no chances. He sees the opening. He runs, makes people miss. He's got power and speed. You know the thing that really, really, really makes it, yeah, it really makes it for him too is when he goes back, Phil, and he fakes like he's going to throw, which holds the linebackers. There's the chairman of the board, the man who's invested in these Jaguars, Wayne Weaver, Morgan, his granddaughter. What a thrill it must be for that young lady to be in that box at this moment. Well, I saw Mr. Weaver last night. I ran into him in the hotel lobby, and hey, he was so excited, so nervous last night. I, I don't think he slept a whole lot. Probably got less sleep than a lot of the players did. We'd like to show you a shot of Pat Bullen, but to win or lose, Pat just didn't want cameras in his boot. The owner of the Broncos. One timeout left for each team. Second and eight. Brunel on the roll, throws the means. Nice tackle by John Mobley. Mobley didn't uh, keep, didn't drive him out of bounds to stop the clock, so that forces Denver to use its final timeout. Very safe play. Here comes a left handed quarterback running out to his left and he has means but Mobley makes a great play as a linebacker not only is he there covering but he also makes the stop so it'll be third down now in about six but the Denver Broncos have no more timeouts it'll be third down and five on the next play as well needless to say this is the biggest defensive play for the Denver Broncos in this entire football game because if, if they allow them to get a first down this game will be over third and a huge five Rodell on the fade touchdown to Jimmy Smith can't well, throw it any better can't throw it any better can't catch it but again what a call they block everybody it's basically a one receiver route they know Denver's got to take a chance come up blitzes to stop us the perfect call was that the perfect throw <laughs> what? Jimmy Smith who yep. sat alone in 1994 conduct number 39 on the defense for throwing the helmet be a 15 yard penalty on the kickoff Ray Crockett that's just a frustration penalty Jimmy Smith two years ago sitting at home nobody wanted him 1984 he was out of football even though he was a second round draft pick of Dallas in 81 82 and here he is two years later caught over 80 balls and just makes that incredible catch Dallas extra point nice snap he knocks it through and the Jacksonville Jaguars have quieted this crowd as they have six others other than the ones in North Florida with incredible performances. This one is Brunel to Smith. Well it's just a good job. Look at the throw though. He throws it on the line and Torrey James really does not have time or the speed to catch up and react to the football. Mark Brunel knows it's either going to be a touchdown or it's going to be incomplete. Take no chances and the ball is thrown to the perfect spot. And Dick you know one other thing that was another third down play and Jimmy Smith on third down leads the National Football League in first downs. Well Mark Brunell on third down is one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. The reason why he can throw the football and he can run with it really puts defenses in a lot of tough situations. Painful for Atwater injured unable to be there to participate. And what uh, Jacksonville is doing now is putting Elway in a position that even the mighty uh, Elway to get two uh, scores with no timeouts is uh, that, that's beyond miracle. Well it, it takes a score now Dick and then recovering an onside kick which is you're right it's, that's asking for a miracle. His yeah. only timeouts the two minute warning but does have 339 left. Brunel his numbers as you look at Elway's 151 yards ordinary for him and a touchdown Brunel on the other hand is rushed for 47 and thrown for 246 more and two touchdowns played impeccably I mean, what a, a what a pickup this was the night before the draft Tom Coughlin got Brunel from Green Bay for a third and fifth round draft pick 
after the penalty gets the kick it from the 45 so he can send it deep and the touchback taken by Denver at the 20 yard line. And here comes John Elway. They've asked a lot of this man in his incredible career and uh, he has delivered so often in his 14 great seasons and uh, with all the the excitement that goes with an underdog pulling off a great upset and I think America always cheers that one still has to feel down deep for this man because this was his best team and he feels he's at his best and now stands down by 10 with three and a half to go. Underneath Davis clock runs short game. Well the big thing for the Broncos in this drought really don't take a chance just make sure you give yourself the opportunity to get down in a score and hopefully you can recover the onside kick after you score. Jeffrey left Miller the speed stirred to the right underneath again. Just to Craven. Back, close to a first down. It is spotted. Good enough for the first down. The only problem is when you're talking about that, Phil, they've got to score really realistically, got to score before the two minute warning. Now they have 50 some odd seconds to do that. That would be the ideal thing. Then the stop of the clock, and then you still have two minutes. 32 yard line. Clock runs 248, 247. Very loose, deep defense for Jacksonville, but Elway tests it anyway. And McCaffrey can't get there at the 30. The only other problem with this whole scenario is this. Defensively, they have not stopped Jacksonville since the first quarter. So, you know, even if they do score, they haven't really stopped Jacksonville. Well, I know, but, but they're, they're going on the onside kick. They don't care about Jacksonville. Well, I'm, no, I'm, I'm just saying that if they get the ball back, not, it, what, it, two minutes I'm talking about. Well, it was uh, November 1993 that the Jaguars were the 30th franchise. The National Football League awarded. And here, two years of play. They stand on the threshold of back to back incredible upsets in their first playoff appearances underneath and through the hands of Anthony Miller. That's the play they wanted. A man with speed, even though it's a short pass, wide open where he could do something. That he didn't catch the ball. Hey, Dick. You talking about something for a second? Jacksonville walks out of this game, Carolina wins. You may have the two expansion teams in the Super Bowl after two years. I mean, it's possible. Well, this has plagued the Broncos all day. Drop passes. Anthony Miller slowing up. There's nobody in front of him. Keep moving. Catch the ball on the run and make something happen. Yeah, the whole idea there was to lead him so he could use all that speed. And uh, Mike Lotus representing the emotions on the Broncos side. Drills this one to the sidelines complete and out of bounds to stop the clock. Anthony Miller at the 48 yard line. Mickey Washington on the coverage for Jacksonville. And if they're going to give you this, this, this is a good throw and a catch by Elway and Miller to get that ball down about 15 yards downfield and get out of bounds. This play only takes about five or six seconds. Good job by Mickey Washington. Know the situation. Know where you're at in the game. The only thing that really hurts you is giving up a big play. Give up the completions to the sideline. They flood three to the right. That usually means they throw left, and Elway does to Miller. And Miller inside the 35-yard line with 220 left in this game. 30-20 Jacksonville leads. Elway at work. Gonna down the ball to save some time. 2-11 left flag down. Oh yeah. They, they caught Tony Brackett's just kind of loafing back onside and Elway took a look at him on the left saw that he wasn't onside and just took that ball threw it down. And there's going to be a five yard penalty. Offside. You bet. Number 90 on the defense. Five yards. Your first down. Every little gift helps at this point. You can see Tony Bracken's not not hustling enough to get back on side. Also, get the five yard penalty. The clock is stopped. Now you get a chance. One, maybe two plays before the two minute warning comes about. First down at the 29 yard line. Again, same formation with Miller left. Three wide receivers right. Davis in the backfield with Elway. Throws to Miller again. Same play. 15. And tackle there. Washington, Davis, Massey, and that is the two-minute warning. Home of the Jaguars and the fans, uh, that town and that area, enraptured by the performance of this young team. Beats Buffalo. Buffalo never lost at Rich Stadium in the playoffs, 9-0, and trying to beat Denver, 8-1 and in their playoff history here in Denver. 
Two minutes to go. Elway at the Jacksonville 15. Looks to the end zone. Searching for an open man. What time he has. Now he guns it. Touchdown McCaffrey! John Elway's last four passes, 16, 18, 14, 15 to McCaffrey for the payoff. And with the extra point now by Elam, Denver will be within three. Oh, no! It goes through! Whoa. Hit the upright and Karen Van. And who knows better that feeling than Jacksonville? That would have forced the Broncos, even if they recover an onside kick, to go for a touchdown. I mean, this is a huge hook, and it hits the upright on the top on the left. Watch this. He just hooks this thing way left. It hits the upright and then goes in. Started with the bad snap. The timing was off, and Elway goes, whoa. Well, it went through. That's all that matters. <laughs> Let's take a look at the touchdown. A wonderful job by John Elway. By in time, there's nobody open, and the receivers for the Broncos keep moving around the end zone. Ed McCaffrey finally gets free and watching go up, ball behind him, and makes a nice catch. Watch Ed McCaffrey. He sees that John Elway is in trouble. Here he is, number 87 in the middle, to the top of your screen. Starts moving back across the end zone, keeps moving. Elway spots him. Nice catch. John Elway reacting to the touchdown. What a drive. They will used only 149, a minute 49 seconds to go. 80 yards in eight plays without a timeout. And now the whole game rests on this onside kick. If Jacksonville recovers, Denver no timeouts. The game literally is over. It's just a couple of kneel downs. One man stays back. They don't even have anybody back. Jacksonville's got a guy on the 32 yard line. By Lachey Maston. Lachey Maston, that was too easy. Just a nice little one hopper, and Maston recovers at the 40 yard line. And Tom Coughlin's disciplined Jaguar team now is one minute 50 seconds away from the AFC championship. It's a good idea. Kick it in the middle of the field. There's less people for the Jaguars in the middle, but the ball takes a Jacksonville bounce right up into his hands. It's one of those things I think you try to top the ball a little bit so it'll take a bounce and then pop up in the air where you have a shot at it. Well, the bounce uh, for Jacksonville has been magical, hasn't it? A couple of up, upright kisses. Well, how, how can Morton, you know, when you think back, if you had one kicker in the league this year, maybe in history, to kick a 30 yard field goal, wouldn't you want to pick Morton Anderson? Well, that's right. Well, they got that break, but I tell you, today, they didn't get many bounces their way. They created their own opportunities. They outplayed the different Broncos and deserved to win the game. So Brunel, certainly the star with his passing and running with one of the kneel downs and the flags fall with it. That'll stop the clock with 145. You got offside on the Denver defense, which doesn't, it just stops the clock. And Paul, you said we could have two expansion teams in the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, you know what? I didn't think Denver had, a, I mean, Jacksonville had a chance Outside, today. Number 95 on the defense, five yards, still first down. Would that be something? If it happened, I, I could say I wouldn't be totally shocked anymore. Well, you uh, will repeat what you said in the pregame show. I know you'll appreciate that, uh, Phil Sims. That, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I asked you if Jacksonville had a chance, you said, well, only if. Uh, Paul McGuire is beautiful. <laughs> I best. I'm the most beautiful guy here. Oh, uh, well. Snap. <laughs> At the 36, 145. Still first down and five. I, I remember when Tom Coughlin, before he went down there and started coaching his team, we talked one day, and he asked me, did they pass a rule in the league where I'm not allowed to have discipline and teach fundamentals <laughs> to these players? Is there a rule that says I can't do these things? No, Tom, there isn't. Your way works. We always knew it. You got some criticism for it, but it, it's really turned out well. The players accepted it, and that's the reason why they where they are now. 40, 39 seconds. One more kneel down by Brunel, and it'll be then official. By the same score as Jacksonville defeated Buffalo a week ago, 30 to 27. 
We told you at the very start that Tom Coughlin has a theme for every game. As owner Weaver celebrates with success comes greater challenge. Well they take another big big step up the mountain the challenge even higher next week they're playing for the AFC championship one game away from playing in the Super Bowl <laughs> the Jacksonville Jaguars have upset Denver 30 to 27.